The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome. It's so great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on. And again, so looking forward to today and this great segment with Dr. Glenna Rice. Um, You know, each month, you know, Glenna comes and brings to the table some of the most relevant yet transformative conversations about what we can do in our lives as individuals and then how does the impact of what we do as individuals, you know, create an energy that is so much greater than that. The bottom line is that, you know, where we are in the world today is a matter of where we are in how we look at the world. And if we're looking at the world as a world of possibilities, something changes, something happens. But if we cannot or haven't figured out how to get there, then if you're not in the worlds of possibilities, then where are you? Today, we're talking with Dr. Glenna in terms of what does it take to be a leader? And I wanted to say to everybody, you know, if you want to find out uh, about Glenna, you can go to glennarice.com. But if you want to find out about her work in access consciousness and being a facilitator that travels all over the world, then you can go to access con- uh, accessconsciousness.com. Whether you've taken one of her workshops, whether you're going to take one of her upcoming classes, uh, all of the above is around her commitment and dedication to making sure that we understand that probabilities and possibilities are not the same thing. And our point of view around where we are in life, in the world, in our future, in our past, in anything makes a difference. Uh, Dr. Glenda, great to have you here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Big, big topic, big, huge, gigantic. Mm-hmm. Oh, thanks for having me on. Always look forward to the show. And this topic is really something I am excited about um, talking to people about. Yeah. I, I mean, let's talk about leader, the word leader, just the word, not, not, not necessarily leader of the company, lead, you know, just that word leader. Um, it has taken on many, many forms uh, 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 and, and many meanings uh, over centuries, right? Mm. Y- years, like phenomenal meaning. And yet at the same time, we think about it in terms of organizations, in terms of governments. But what we don't really spend a whole lot of time on is about ourselves. And I want to ask you, why is this this topic today and how has this topic today become important for you and especially important for what you're talking about regarding the world? Mm, Okay. Yeah. So just recently, um, Gary Douglas, the founder of Access did an event called Leaders for the Future. It was a free event. Um, And he was inspired by what he was seeing with the children from the Douglas school, the, the Parkland shooting and what they have been creating and changing um, since that tragic event Mm -hmm. that they were involved, you know, that that occurred at their school and they were part of um, and how they have stepped up into being a leader for the future. Now, um, Access Consciousness, we've been asking for statesmen and leaders and people that would change politics and change government um, to show up. And and none of us were actually seeing that it would be... um, you know, 17, 18 year old children that would be the ones that would be showing mm. that possibility to the world. So this this event that he just did on Friday night, I believe, um, he was asking for contribution and mm-hmm. talking about stepping into being a leader um, in your life. You know, the greatness of you is where the leadership comes from when you're being you and being the greatness of you and not worrying whether anybody's ever gonna follow you. That w- That's what makes a great leader. Mm-hmm. That you're willing to be you on the planet and be you in this world and know what you would like to change and making a demand to change that 
and being willing to choose it. And then from that place, everything will start to contributing to what you're asking for. And that's what we were seeing with these kids. Um, kids, young adults, teenagers, I won't want to call them kids because yeah. my kids who are the same age wouldn't like Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but you know, the way they stepped up and the willingness to, um, whether anyone was going to follow or not, I mean, they've been getting a really hard time from a lot of different areas and they're still just stepping forward and it's in a real nonpartisan way. Um, it's pretty amazing Yeah, what they're doing. I mean, let's talk about the emergence of this for the moment, if we could, and you know, what the world invites us to really look at now. Um, and, you know, this idea of looking at leaders and even referring to our youth in a leadership role, it, it, it hasn't been more obvious than it is now. I mean, clearly we have had conversations, um, you know, Glenna, over the past decades about our youth going to lead the way. And, and every decade we say that, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but but for the first time since a really long time, right, for the first time, we see the action. And this is really the question. And what you and I have talked about a lot is there is the world we live in today where we can conceptualize our lives or we can actually live them. And don't you think the difference now is that we're seeing action that is being taken that is aligning with the youth and what they believe in. Absolutely. Yes, they, they, they took the action steps, which is really where I, I'm very impressed with how, you know, they didn't just talk about stuff a couple times right after things happened. They are out there in the entire country at rallies and changing things and changing points of views in places you never thought they could change points of views. I mean, that's really having a commitment to what you want to see a change for in the future um, and taking the, you know, actualizing that. I mean, we have lots of ideas and we're really get, m- many of us are really great at creating and creating ideas and going p- beyond that mm-hmm. is where it gets a little tricky to start actualizing the future you would like to see on the planet mm-hmm. into place and, and have, making that choice to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and having a commitment to you and your life and what you'd like to see as the future is a big part of that. I mean, so few of us are actually committed to even our own life, let alone cl- committed to creating a different future. But I, I do know that people want that. They desire that commitment. And often we just don't know what that looks like or how to go about doing it. Um, and somewhere it's just making that demand that you're going to have that as part of your reality. You know, I want to ask you this because I do believe in this intergenerational uh, energy, meaning, you know, there is a vision. There's There are things that get passed on to us. Um, the question really is, uh, for for us today, really looking at that, what does it take to be a leader? And I want to get back to that question about what does it take, Glenna, to be a leader? We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to look at this and we're going to look at how we define leader in the world and in our own personal sphere of influence. When we come back, do you know that you are a leader? Do you know that you are? And why would Glenna and I say that? We're going to take a short break. Dr. Glenna Rice is in the house. I want to make sure that everybody knows she's got several upcoming classes that we're going to plug in and let you know about. Um, So when we come back, we'll give you that information. But think about this. What do we need to know about leadership and the leaders of the future? Let's take a short break, everyone. We'll be right back. Stay juicy. Tune in to Your Juicy Love with me, Una Drake, co-hosting monthly with Dr. Pat and every second Monday at 12 p.m. on Transformation Talk Radio. My show, Your Juicy Love, helps you find the dynamic, life-affirming love you've always wanted. Transform your relationships and bring peace, joy, and juicy, juicy love to planet Earth. For more information, visit unadrake.com. Tune in to Synergenetic Living Radio, where Rick and Grace Paris discuss the synergenetic way of life, what it means to truly change your perspective in life, what it means to take control of your life and manifest your true desires. 
For more information on Rick and Grace Paris and Synergenetic Living, check out SynergeneticLiving.com. Get clear on the life you desire and the current life you are creating and what is between the two. Synergenetic Living, living life loud. This is Debbie Pokornik with a break-free parenting tip. Parenting will always be a bit of a mystery. Who knows why some parenting ideas work and others do not? Or why some kids seem to succeed despite family setbacks, while others have so much given to them and yet fail to thrive? The one thing we do know is that once you have a child, you'll never be quite the same again. Awe-inspiring emotions like overwhelming love, extreme guilt, intense frustration, and incredible joy make this job second to none. Breaking free of parenting pressures means recognizing the pieces that make us unique, the pieces that we carry with us from the past, and the pieces that are influenced by the society we live in. When we can pick and choose which pieces we want to keep around and change the others to align with our inner wisdom, we will feel more self-assured in our role as a parent. For information and to work with Debbie, visit EmpoweringNRG.com. Dream on, lie high, and live adventurously on The Laura Meeks Show. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio as host Laura Meeks guides you in finding your unique gifts and bringing them to life. As a certified life coach, speaker, and veteran bomber pilot for the U.S. Air Force, Laura knows how to follow a dream. She is ready to support you so you can dream on, fly high, and live adventurously. For more information on Laura and her work, visit flyhighliving.com. Are you ready to attract abundance, release stress, look and feel younger, all from your smartphone? Get Pure Light, a free mobile app with audios that transmit powerful frequencies to shift anything in your life. Created by some of the world's top energy healers, these audios have created miracles, often quickly. Enjoy the latest in conscious technology and download Pure Light today. To find out more, visit purelightaudio.com. Yeah, you want to talk about some people that uh, can tell you a little bit about what it means to be a leader. Wow, you too. Yeah, I mean, think about it. Um, Listen, Dr. Glenna Rice joining us here today. What does it take to be a leader? Um, And, you know, are you willing to be a leader in your own life? But do you actually believe that you are a leader? Do you believe that? Do you believe you are a leader? I mean, how many times has somebody said to you, man, you know, you're a great leader, you're great. And you say, no, 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 I'm not, a, no, I don't want to be the leader. I don't want to be the leader. Uh, I Don't, don't, don't put that on me. Uh, before we jump into this, and I, I want to say this, This is a bold statement and love to hear from you you all. Without even you acknowledging that you're a leader, leadership is a birthright. The minute we were given free will, we got the big L word. Uh, But before we jump into that big uh, affirmation, uh, Glenna, I would love for you to tell people First of all, about the special event, and I know it's going to play again, but also you've got some upcoming classes. Let's let's make sure people know how to find out about you and about Access Consciousness. Um, yeah, so there was this event just on Friday evening that was actually live streamed worldwide. I think there was over 7,000 people that were... Mm-hmm. That viewed it, that Gary Douglas, the founder of Access, put on for Leaders of the Future, inspired mm-hmm. by the children... I was saying in the first segment that we're in the Parkland shooting and what they have been creating and the leaders they have been um, for t- t- creating a different possibility with gun laws, but just having their changing points of views out there um, about this entire topic that's never been done this way before. Mm. And, you know, it inspired this call that we're doing and inspired me to really look at where, you know, being a leader in my own life, but mm. also being an inspiration for greater for the, everyone, the planet. Um, and it's funny, he's talking about, I, I don't want to be a leader. That was so much me. Um, I know. I, I remember, you know, if you had that teen group in high school that you had to work on a project, I'd be the last person to say something until nobody else had any ideas. And then I would have, to, I, like, I would be forced to step up. What if we didn't have to be forced to step up into ah. knowing what we know? <laughs> ah. And being that um, <laughs> on the planet. Oh, and to, to find glennarice.com, 
that's my website or accessconsciousness.com slash Dr. Glenna Rice. And I'm working on a new website that should be up by the end of the month, um, which will be drglennarice.com, but it's not live yet. Okay, good, good. I like it because we got to keep continuing to evolve and grow. Yeah. You know, every day I get to look at myself in the mirror and I say, what? I, I really do. I look in the mirror and I say, what? Like, what just happened? Are you, are you awake enough? Uh, Pat, have you, did you wake up yet for this or what? And, you know, because life is going to go on. Whether we decide to, you know, go with the flow here or not, it's going to keep rolling, right? Um, but, yep. you know, this question of leadership and who is the leader, I mean, you know, somebody said to me once, and this I was defending, I was defending my research, and they said, Pat, if everybody's a leader, then who are the followers? I said, everybody. I said, we get to be both. But the question is, what does it take, Glenna, uh, for us to really look and become leaders, leaders in our life, leaders in the world? The, what it takes is a choice, mm. the choice to be that. To put, to the cho- you know, and to know that you are and can be, and it's it's not this daunting thing, and it doesn't require anything of you but the choice um, to be a leader. You know, to be a leader in your family, to be a leader in your business, to be a leader in your life, to be committed to your life. It's it's a choice to be that, and what it looks like is going to be different. And like you just said, people may follow you, they may not. You may be following other people. Um, I hope that there's many people that inspire me on the planet. Um, every day that I will f- inspire me to follow what they're choosing and to create more for me. And I'm hoping that, that I am being that for other people on the planet all the time too. But if I choose something that I know will create something greater, I'm not going to be choosing it because I want people to follow me. And that's the, a great inspiration of a leader is that they are choosing not because they want followers. They're choosing because they know it's going to create something different and they're committed to that change and that possibility, whatever that is for you. And those kids, those teenagers are, are, are the epitome of what that is right now. Yeah, the other thing I wanna give, uh, I, I, I wanna throw a little shout out here mm-hmm. uh, to uh, the parents. And why do I wanna do that? Uh, let's just talk about that for a minute. You, you know, my stepmom, I've talked about my stepmom like a, a lot. Uh, my stepmom used to have so many things that she would say, Glenna. So one of them, okay, one of them was, she'd say to me, honey, you know, the apple don't fall far from the tree. And so again, took me like 40 years to figure out what she's talking about. But there is also a, a level of support that had to emerge for those youth, for the youth uh, to be able to step forward in a powerful, I'm not talking a, I, I'm saying a powerful leadership role. Glenna. Yeah. What does that energy take? Look at, you go all over the world, you teach people, but there is an energy that is required to show up in life that way. Yeah. What is that, Dr. Glenna? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you notice I'm not answering that question myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's what I was just saying. It's that willingness to know and to choose and to be that on the planet and to receive, you know, it's really about, it's about receiving that support from the universe, from the consciousness of everything around you and the people that are willing to support you. And the people don't support you if you're not inspiring them. I mean, people will follow people with this, you know, with a message that sounds great. But when you know the message is something that's changing something, when you can feel that energy um, and that everything is supporting that, it's it, it, there's an ease with people um, contributing to you and contributing to what you want to change because they see the possibility that you're choosing. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't have a 10-step program to being a great later. <laughs> 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 Maybe I'll come up with that. Um, so it, it's not something specific that you actually do. It's more, it's you choose and then, the, and you start following what's supporting you in that choice. And sometimes you don't even, I mean, I don't know, I don't know that they chose this seeing exactly what, what it was going to be creating in the future. They just chose. And then everything starts to create around you. I mean, just little things like, I remember, it's weird, this keeps popping in my head, but I chose mm-hmm. as a parent to have a home birth. 
which mm-hmm. everyone thought I was a complete whack job. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you doing? It's totally unsafe. But I knew. I absolutely knew without doubt that that was what I was going to create the most for me. Um, I'd worked in hospitals for years and I didn't really like the way that they were doing birth. And, and after it's the number of people and friends that I had that had babies that chose that kind of a birth was amazing afterwards. And it still inspires people. I was being a leader in that and I wasn't choosing it to be a leader. I didn't choose it to, for anybody else to ever have a home birth. That was me being committed to my life and what I wanted to create. But it inspired other people to choose what they knew. And it could it could be something as simple as that. It's not like we have to go out and have a, you know, a mass audience and a mass stage. It may be that mm-hmm. just a few people that you know around you, you will inspire them to something greater because you choose something mm-hmm. greater. You know, I got I gotta tell you, I um I was getting ready for today. I always prepare for the shows, right? Mm-hmm. And I I I don't know what it was, but I started to go back and, and just look at, you know, some of the stuff that I discovered along the way to becoming me. And I came across an old quote I had archived from a gentleman. His name is Ar- Arno Penzias. This is a man that won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1978 for the Big Bang Theory. Now, how do I know this guy? Here's how I know this guy. Here I am, this newborn worker person, right? Really much more interested in Woodstock and going out and listening to Janis Joplin. Okay, so really old, okay? These are old things I'm saying. But that's not the point. That was me. But this man, let's call him a leader, let's do it. But this man I met, I'm telling you, you couldn't tell me what the Nobel Peace Prize was. Didn't know, didn't care. But I met this guy, his name Arno Penzias. And I didn't know who he was. I knew him as the man that would bring bagels in on Fridays at Bell Labs, okay? Mm. This is before he was the Big Bang Man. Bagels on Friday. And I played ping pong with the engineers. So I knew all these guys, right? I mean, that's why I wanted a PhD. Because these people had so much fun. And I delivered mail to them. And they had PhD at the end of their name. And I thought, oh, I got to get me one of them. So here he is. And I remember this. And this is what's stuck in my mind as I think about leadership. This guy brought the leftover bagels to the fifth floor in the where the boiler things are hanging, right? Mm -hmm. Brought them up there for us. And we talked to this this gentleman, and we're playing ping pong. Little did I know that his Friday bagel sessions were so he could hear what his, all of his employees, Glenna, come on, think about this. This is a man that used to invite people in for bagels so he could talk to them and listen to them. So when we talk about emerging leaders in our youth, it also requires us to listen. Mm. And I think that we need to get back the lost art of listening. And that's why Gary's work And what you're pointing to today is so pivotal for me. And I hope it's pivotal for the rest of the world. Because we have to stop long enough to listen. Even if it means you got to spend a few bucks on bagels, right? Yeah. (laughs) 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 A a great leader would be someone that listens to everyone that is inspired by them or choosing to listen to what they're saying. Mm -hmm. To have that information flow between them and the people that, because you're not, a, a leader's not out on their own. Mm-hmm. They're not by themselves in the world. They've got the everything contributing to them that they're willing to choose to contribute to them. And to hear all of that and being willing to always follow the energy that's going to create more. I mean, you ha- if, you've, if you've chosen that you want to change something in your life on the planet, then you put that question out there. You know, you put that out there. What would it take for this to change? You know, what would it take that for gun control to change? You know, that's really what the question they put out there. What's that going to take? And then you're listening to everything available 
that is going to contribute to what you're asking for. Be that energetic contributions or what people say and to see like what matches the energy of what you're asking for. So if that matches the energy and someone is um, talking crazy about, you know, taking guns away, that's not an energy that's going to match the choices you are, what you're asking to create, what you're choosing to be. But if you hear some, you know, there's someone that comes and says, oh, I have all these wonderful ideas about how to talk to this group and that matches the energy, then you go there and you follow that. So you're always listening, listening to the people and to the consciousness and everything around you. Yeah, you cannot be a great leader if you're not listening. Absolutely. Well, we're going to we're going to take a short break. We come back. We're going to tease this apart. The mm. question really I want to ask all of you is, are you willing and are you open to completely embrace your birthright as a strong and powerful leader in the world? All of you listening. It doesn't matter where you're listening from. It doesn't matter if you're thinking, well, I don't really warrant that in my job. I drive a taxi uh, or whatever it is that you're thinking that you don't think. And by the way, if you've ever been in a taxi in New York, I'm telling you, they are the leader. <laughs> I don't even know where that came from. But this is the question. Many. Oh, my gosh. I mean, you relinquish all sense of control doing that. Here we go. 1-800-930-2819. There you go. I want to leave you with this quote, and when we come back, here's a quote from pivotal research that was done. Pivotal. Here's the quote. A strong leader for me is one that stands up for what they believe is right, puts forth their point, tries to work through the system to make what they believe right happen. And most leaders I've seen waffle in the breeze of their bosses. What do you think about that? Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. Take your own journey with the angels with Claire Candy Hoff's Heaven Sent Guided Angel Meditation CD. Letting go of concerns and living in the now. This beautiful CD walks listeners through practical exercises to help free them from the burdens, worries, and concerns of daily life. Walking a quarter of the way across the bridge, you see a bright, emerald green light and sense a loving presence this is archangel raphael's green healing energies nourishing and revitalizing you take a moment now to bathe in this green healing light Giving you much more than just relaxation and stress release, this wonderfully narrated CD provides vivid visualization, soothing and inspiring music, and an angel's choir that will bring you peace, clarity, and a newfound awareness. Visit angelhealinghouse.com today. Interested in deepening your spiritual practice? The School for Esoteric Studies offers online training to spiritual seekers from all paths of life and individual coaching. Our courses synthesize Eastern and Western spiritual traditions based on meditation, study, and service applied to everyday life. To learn more about our courses and services, please visit www.esotericstudies.net. Defining success and putting minds to work. With the Higher Learners Career and Leadership Series, Rudy Racine will help you craft your personal definition of success, offering support and guidance as you move forward towards your goals. Take the leap. With the right mix of focus and motivation, anything can be achieved. Tune in every first and third Monday at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 Eastern. And for more information on Rudy Racine and Higher Learners, visit Rudy's site at higherlearners.com. That's H-I-R-E learners.com. Tune in to Knowledge Book Radio with host Marge Potasik each Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Through many experiences, Marge was led to the Knowledge Book, a gift to humanity in its transition to the Golden Age, and it provided the truth and the answers. She now shares information from the Knowledge Book with you each week on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information, visit USA.TheKnowledgeBook.net. To find answers to life's questions, you need to look within yourself. Dr. Glenna Rice brings your questionable conversations on Transformation Talk Radio each month. Tune in each month for insight into how you can live up to your full potential. Dr. Glenna is a physical therapist, certified access consciousness, and access body class facilitator. How does it get any better than this? 
For more information on Dr. Glenna Rice and her work, visit GlennaRice.com. Hey, everybody, we'd love to hear from you. You know, I got a couple of questions for those of you out there. This is really, um, and, and, I, and I absolutely know why you wouldn't call into today's show. <laughs> You know, because of the very reason that this is a hot button. Anytime somebody points to me and says, oh, my God, Pat, you're the leader of da 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 a positive talk, da 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 I, I, I just take myself to the movies. It's like, uh, no, that is a lot of responsibility. But I'm getting better at it, thanks to you, Glenna, uh, cool. and thanks. Gary, uh, because... It is our birthright. The minute we were given the right to choose, that's the very moment that we also were giving leadership possibility. Really were. Now, before we go into this, and Benny will probably skip the next break, Glenna, I, I got to tell people how they can find out all about this, and hopefully we'll be able to post this video once we get permission, right? Yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, I'm sure it's fine now, but we're looking for official. I'm just waiting for the message to come in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And you can also go to the accessconsciousness.com website yeah. and um, find the, the link to watch it. It's probably right up on the front page right now. So that won't be difficult. Yeah, it was in Washington, D.C. on Friday yeah. night. Um, it's an hour and a half. He Gary is fabulous. He's Gary, um, if you haven't seen or met him. He doesn't do free events very often. I think this is the third one he's ever done in the 14 mm -hmm. years I've been doing this work. So um, it's a great way to see him live um, and how he changes things and asks questions and creates possibilities. It's very inspirational. And mm -hmm. he's very moved by this. So it's quite beautiful to see this, um, this event. I think we are moved by it for a number of reasons. I know why it's very moving for me and why the whole um, representation of, uh, I, I like to call it integrity, and I'll tell you what I mean by that, is showing up now. Because it's one thing to have your freedom violated and do nothing about it. And it's another thing to have your freedom violated and to stand up so that it doesn't happen again. Um, yeah. And, you know, this is what we're talking about. But also, you know, what I said to what I'm saying to all of you listening, 1-800-930-2819. I'd love to know how you feel about leadership and mm -hmm. what does it mean to you? Because we have to come together. You know, in the next hour, I, I'm going to be talking with uh, Matthew Fox, Skylar Wilson, Jennifer Litzig, and we're going to be talking about, you know, creating a new order because there is a new order afoot. But the new order is what you're talking about, Glenna. It is also what Gary is talking about. It is what I studied for years. It is a new narrative on what integrity has come to mean. And, you know, when I, when I came out of the gate on leadership, I didn't know I was going to research leadership. I got to tell you, it was far, far from anything I even wanted any part of. But I had a... <laughs> Oh, my God, if she hears me say this, I had a, a pit bull for a chairperson who she became my friend mm -hmm. and she is responsible for me becoming a lot of who I am today in the world. She and it's was, yeah, she was a motivator and a leader. For She's you. the motivator and a leader. But she really was. I got to ask you this question. And before I do, uh, we're going to go to the phones. I want to ask you, what is it going to take for us to own our leader in a leader responsibility? But let's go to the phones first. I love that. Mr. Sure. Benny, who do we have? Shar from Canada. Shar, welcome to the show. Hi, Shar. Thank you. Hi. Well, how are you? I'm good. How are you, ladies? Or, well, I mean, I'm sorry for that. <laughs> yeah, no, we're, we're good. good? <laughs> oh, we're, we're, I, I like to be called a lady. It doesn't happen very often in my life. I mean, <laughs> probably count that on one hand. Um, but what, what do you think about what we're talking about today here? It's taking responsibility for our life. That's where the magic happens. Mm. Mm-hmm. Really yeah, and responsibility. It's, it's taking responsibility for our own life. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would because say that. Because our that's lives so are a gift. Mm. Mm. Leadership you know, is 
owning your power. Mm -hmm. It really is. I I love that. Owning your power in in office, uh, being authentic about it, too. I love it. Not just pretending that you're, you know, like we all have our weaknesses and our strengths, and I think that is part of integrity, uh, the vulnerability, too. Yeah, wow. Wow. Like you said you had that coach, and sometimes when you have somebody that's going to be so honest with you to the core, oh yeah, that is such a help. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, because we I, can be in such denial. Oh, I, I'm so grateful for the people that I've had in my life. And I was talking about Cherry, Cherry Granrose, by the way who was, when I was doing this research, was my committee chair, my mentor, and literally she was like, you're going to do this and you're going to keep doing it. But Glenna, what were you starting to say? Oh, uh, the the word responsibility is such an Mm -hmm. interesting word. And Mm -hmm. it's really to be able to uh, respond appropriately to what's required of you in any moment. It's not a burden. And we often think of responsibility as Mm -hmm. some burden as something, you know, we have to be responsible for our kids, responsible for paying the rent, responsible for all these things, which is really not the energy of that word. That is, word is like to respond to what is required of you to create mm-hmm. great. And that's truly what leadership is. So thank you so much for bringing that up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you, thank HR, you. can I ask you, let me ask you this question. Uh, are, are you willing to embrace the leader that you are? I absolutely am. Awesome. I absolutely am. I am. You know, um, I think that uh, we all have unique gifts, and uh, I I absolutely love the um, definition of responsibility that I just heard, Mm -hmm. because um, a lot of times in life, we we react instead of respond, and when we can learn to take that space in between, and that space in between what you you respond to instead of react to is where the magic happens. That's where you take your leadership power back. Yes, yeah. yeah. so reaction really never comes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Wow, Char, th- thank you so much for calling in. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, wow. you. thank you, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> funny. I love being called a lady. In fact, maybe we'll do a show on that. We uh, should do a show on that. Because the lady is someone who follows the energy and gets everything she desires. Well, I I think that, you know, there's been an evolution, especially for me in my own consciousness, about who I am. And nine times out of ten, I can point to uh, periods in my life where I couldn't own certain things because I didn't feel very good about myself, Glenna. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't feel very good about myself. Um. But, you know, there is an obligatory, you know, obligatory uh, obligation, nature to, to leadership. There really is. And whenever I say that, people are like, oh, no, what did you just say? Obligated. Why would you say that? Um, so he, here, here, here's what, if, if you don't do these things I'm about to say, people lose trust in you. If people lose trust in you as a leader chances of being effective not very good the only time you can be effective in that role is if you are the fear monger and have power over people you know what i mean yeah yeah that's that's a very fun one to have that's not a fun one no creating a leadership based on fear isn't being a leader no something very different so when I asked this question uh, in, in research that I didn't expect to ask, but the word integrity is used a lot, Glenna, and it's used as associated with leaders, right? Yes. Uh, almost always, right? If you say, oh, yeah, they have a lot. Okay, so I had to ask the question, and, and here's what the people in the study said. They said there are four different, five different aspects to this. One, 88% said in leadership, you have to be accountable for doing what one says one will do right out of the gate. Mm. That's what these young people did, right? They said they were going to do something and they did it. Number two, 
80% said you had to be trustworthy. There we go. These kids had a level of trustworthy and credibility because their previous actions spoke for themselves. Number three, didn't score very high, but still a majority, had to be fair and just in dealing with others. Number four, this is the winner. Out of, out of eight years of studying, this is the game taker. 96% said you had to show respect and honor the dignity of others. 96%. Yeah. This was a finding where 98% of thousands of people that I asked questions to said respect is number one. The honoring of people, absolutely. That Isn't is that interesting? Yeah. I don't think that's changed. I think that's what the youth and Gary and all of you are talking about. We well, just forget. Yeah. When you were talking about fear, you when you are playing to someone's fear mm -hmm. to get them to believe in a point of view or mm -hmm. do what you're saying they should do or to follow you, um, there is no honoring in anybody when you're playing to their fear. Because fear is not really mm -hmm. real. Fear mm -hmm. is something that is a creation. It's um, something that distracts you from your knowing. It's a mm -hmm. distraction from what you actually know, whether you're actually safe or not, whether there actually is a problem. But once you put fear into the equation, which we're seeing a lot in the world right now from who, the people you're calling leaders, mm -hmm. then those, then everyone that's listening to you gets distracted from their actual awareness of what is true. Mm -hmm. Now, is, you know, they can't be, and the way to stop this, the way to interrupt that energy is to ask a question. Yes. Ask a question will always allow you to know what's true, whether these people that we're listening to are honest or have integrity. Um, and the other things you spoke to is to ask a question. It's, and it, just using the word truth, like, is what they're saying true? Is that light for me? Mm. Yes or no? Do we have to worry about thousands of crazy immigrants coming across the border killing people? Yes or no? I mean, the energy is a huge no. Mm -hmm. There's always been gangs on the planet. There always probably will be people with that. But it's not, that is playing on a fear that's not real that will distract people from knowing what could actually change something mm -hmm. or to know that it's just a lie. Now, there, there, are, there are bad people. There are people that do ugly things. Um, but to take that fear and turn it into something else, which most of us are starting to see pretty loudly if we're willing to not have to be right about our point of view. That's another thing we can talk about. Um, the, 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 the things that are going on that, we're, that are building fear aren't true, but people can't see that when you use fear. So there is no um, honoring of anybody when you're bringing up fear. This is so fascinating too, because I was getting, uh, I, I was out getting a coffee and, oh gosh, when was it? Like over the weekend? I don't know, but it was like recent, like over the weekend, recent or something. Yeah, it was yesterday maybe. And, and so there were people talking about something I hadn't seen. Apparently there was some interview uh, on TV and I guess one of the guys that is under investigation and th these women were talking about it and they weren't talking about the issue right? There wasn't anybody bashing anything. Mm -hmm. Here's what they said. They were talking about the guy and, and I guess, his, I guess his name is Paige and they were talking about him and they said, oh, somebody needs to tell him that he needs to, we need to knock the smile off his face. And they were talking about his, how he was coming across. And I don't think that any, that from what I gathered in five minutes, I don't think they even knew what he was saying. But they were saying, how could you talk about uh, hacking our election and smile at the same time? That's what they were stuck on. So there's a disconnect in how we trust our people. See? Yes. It's not enough to just <laughs> to just say, oh, yeah, this is the truth. I, this is really true. You know this. You're a parent. I got in more trouble as a kid because anytime my mom asked me if I had done something... I would laugh. I was punished more than the average child because I just couldn't keep a straight face. Yes, I have had that <laughs> with children too. They have laughed when I asked if they did something and they were trying to say they didn't, they smiled. Um, you know, there is a really wonderful tool that mm -hmm. I can give people if, yes, they're, please. You know, if they're listening to the news and the politicians and the and 
craziness and sanity that's going on right now. If you say truth while you're listening to it, you will know what is true. You, you will know if they're lying or if it's a live, something live, they may actually say what's true, which is, um, has been known to happen at times. So mm-hmm. just, the, just having the, it's not, it's, it's saying truth when someone's speaking to you, they will know, you will know if they're lying or they will tell you what's true. And what's true is always lighter for you. If it's heavy, it's a lie. I mean, that's another thing. If you're listening mm-hmm. to this stuff and it feels heavy, it's a lie. It's yeah. not true. You all yeah. have the ability to know what is true, to know what's yeah. true, to know what's true with when people are talking to you and what's true on the planet. Yeah. And you have the ability to know when it's a lie. By what's heavy is always a lie. If people are yelling and screaming and reacting, that's usually pretty heavy. Most of the time, that's a lie. And when someone speaks to you with what is true for you and what is true, it's it, there's a lightness to it. And that lightness is what we like to, you know, what a leader inspires you to. Leaders inspire to what's greater, what's lighter, what's more, not the heavy, dense ugliness. That's where you come into the, the leaders that are, the people that are calling themselves leader that are coming from mm. a fear-based place. And we know, Glenna, don't we? See, see, this is the thing that I think is so important. And, and I think we should do a show just on this, on the energy of this. Yeah. We know when something is light and heavy, mm-hmm. but we don't always want to admit it. No, we want to pretend it's not true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, we do. But then you're just lying to yourself. Yeah. And what does that create? I, I mean, I know after years of doing this is knowing what's true for me is the greatest gift I have for mm-hmm. me. That's being me. That's being an integrity with me to know what is true for me. And what's a lie and mm-hmm. always following what is true for me, always following what is lighter. And what I've seen is that my life just gets greater. The consciousness mm-hmm. of everything contributes to you when you're being true to you, when you're being you. That's when mm-hmm. you're receiving more than you can imagine. When we come from the lies and we pretend, when we pretend <laughs> that something that's not true is real, very little can contribute to you from that place. I know. You know, it's interesting because I I actually, after the shows today, I have to call the doctor's office and apologize to the scheduler that answered the phone today Um, because they just got me on a day where uh, I have to make an appointment to get an opinion about this MRI. And I just left the doctor that I had been working with because I didn't feel like I was being treated in a way that I trusted what they were saying to me. And so I had three different assistants come in the room, no paperwork, talk to me. So this poor guy this morning, uh, and I, I called a really great doctor, and a poor guy this morning is telling me the process. And he says, well, the assistant's gonna come in for, and I just, I lost it. I was like, I said, okay, wait a minute. I have the MRI. I have the report. I have the disc. So I don't understand. What is the assistant going to say to me? And he tried to explain it to me. And I said, you know, let me rethink this. Because part of, I think, our journey is we are in search of truth. But my bad in this this morning was I was in search of truth the way that I wanted to get it. And we don't live in that world. You know, we live in a world that has process procedures and other things. We do live in a world with order. But sometimes, Glenna, I just don't like it, period. (laughs) (laughs) No, world chaos actually creates more, um, which is funny. That's why (laughs) asking questions creates chaos because those that those the things that are ordered and stuck, you can see around them, beyond them, and change them so you can actually get the information that you require to change things. So Mm -hmm. asking, you know, just that, what else is possible here I haven't considered is one of those questions that starts to interrupt the energies of this, the order that can frustrate us so much. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you to leave us with a question today or several of them so that we can explore and, and acknowledge and honor the leader within. What 
would be some of the where, ways to let that part of ourselves emerge and shine today's world. Well, what would it take for you to acknowledge where you have been a leader, where you didn't give up and you didn't give in and you quit and you were willing to choose something greater and acknowledging those times that you've already been that and ask for more of it? Because we've all been that and we all know what that energy is. Mm. Wow. Again, please tell folks, Glenna, how folks can find out about this recording. And as soon as we we get the okay, we're going to post the link to it for folks. Um, and, and also, thank you for today. Thank oh, you for today. Because you. you clearly are a leader for positive change. You know, you have made your mark on the world and continue to. Oh, thank you, Pat. As have you. Mm. As have you. Yeah, accessconsciousness.com. You can um, find, I think it's up there or they're getting it up very soon. I mean, the class just happened. Um, and to find out more about me, glennarice.com. Or, and I have a couple of classes coming up in Mexico City this weekend, Energetic Manual Therapy, um, no prerequisites. So you can um, find that on the site too. Mm-hmm. glennarice.com slash EMT. I love it. Wow. They, and Glenna is teaching classes everywhere. And, you know, for uh, Rhonda, for your text message you just sent me asking for an example of an integ- integrity, let me leave you with a direct quote. Here's a direct quote from people I, I interviewed on this research. We don't cut corners. We don't sell seconds. We don't advertise fraudulently. We're going to do everything above board in compliance with rules and regulations. We treat each other with respect and high regard and every interaction should be of that nature. Everything and everyone will be treated in the same way. Address issues immediately and truthfully and honestly. Make sure everything is clearly communicated and clearly demonstrated. That's what the youth has done. Glenna, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pat. All right, everybody. We're going to take a shorty. We will be right back. Seating audio was via a Skype call.